already 11 o'clock. It's crazy. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Jolene. Glad you're here. I, I'm new with you, Catherine. I've been watching you a few times on YouTube and love your heart for the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I love him and Good I night. love his children. Let's see here. That um, would be me. <laughs> Yeah, I had to learn to love this one first, though, right? Like I had, to, yeah. I had to learn to love me first. Okay, I'm gonna start recording really quickly. Uh, make sure everybody knows we're recording. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I think everything is set up. It just takes me a minute to make sure we're alive and that we're recording, so this can be put up on YouTube later for the other ladies to be blessed by who haven't found me yet. We're going to find me like Jolene did. Okay. And then I'm just going to pull up the Facebook group on my phone in case anybody has any comments there or needs anything. I'm pretty good at multitasking for the most part. <laughs> Too good at it. Actually, I think it's unhealthy. Pretty sure. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's go to my group real quick. All right, so I'll just hang out in there with the volume down. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Tabitha, for taking the time to be here and just chat with us. I told the ladies in our group that we would kind of just chat for about 20 minutes or so. I mean, just as the Lord leads us. And then if there um, is any questions that people might have for you afterwards, I'm going to leave just a little bit of time, five or 10 minutes um, for them to be able to do that. So if you guys are watching live on Facebook, come and join us in the Zoom room because that is going to be where you'll be able to ask those questions questions after, um, you know, we're done chatting. And so come on over, click that link. I just posted for you in the group that has, um, has a zoom link. If you don't have zoom, don't worry, just hang out live in the Facebook group. Don't worry about trying to figure it out. You'll miss some stuff. So just stay in there. And if you have questions and you, and you don't want to come into the zoom room, leave them in the comments. I am checking the comments right now in the live on uh, Facebook too. So I'll see them. So even if, if you can't talk directly to Tabitha, I'll ask her for you that way. If you want to leave your, um, questions in the comments. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And hey, mom, I see you watching. <laughs> it's fun. That's so fun. Okay. Let me let some other ladies in here. There we go. All right. So turn my volume down. All right. Hi, Ada. Is it Ada? Yes. Hi, Ada. Okay. She's still connecting. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of of some background uh, from from my meeting. You know how I met Tabitha and stuff. I've just met her through church, and I'm so thankful that I did. I've just felt connected. Actually, we were neighbors and didn't know each other for a long time, and didn't even realize it. And I met her mom and fell in love with her mom before I even knew her. And um, then when she started coming to uh, the church that I went to at the time, I was just super like drawn to her and connected to her. I thought she just had this uh, beautiful um, life in her. She just has this life and you guys are going to get to see some of that, even though her voice is struggling right now. Um, she, she's been dealing with a little bit of laryngitis and so she's able to speak today. I'm so thankful for that, but, um, but I just know her, she's my hairstylist. She did my hair for my wedding and she made me look like a supermodel with my makeup. And <laughs> so I love this lady. Thank you for being here, um, to share with us today. I'm really thankful. I'm excited to be here. Good. So Tabitha is a mom and she has two kids and she's also a hairstylist. Like you guys just heard, she, uh, is that what you're called? A hairstylist or a dresser? Yeah, hairstylist. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she does hair. <laughs> <laughs> and she does a good job um, of doing hair. So um, she just lives, you know, close by locally. And I have watched her transform. I have watched her transform. And she's she's been like this amazing uh, inspiration to me just watching her. And I remember when I first um, saw her transformation start to take place. I was shocked by it because it just seemed like it came out of nowhere. And I remember, I don't know if you remember this, Tabitha, me sitting with you at the table at our mom's group going, how in the world did you do it? <laughs> I remember. Yeah. And I was so shocked. So, um, it just seemed like it, it happened overnight. Like one day you were much heavier than you were and then you weren't, you know? Um, so I, I just want to start there. 
um, with some, with some kind of going from the beginning, so to speak, maybe like how, how much did you weigh before you started your weight loss journey? Let's just start there. Do you remember about yeah. you know, the exact? Yeah, like probably 260. Whoa. Okay. I would have never guessed. Wow. Okay. So with that, what, what did you like, what happened in your life that made you decide like, this is the time I'm losing this weight. I'm getting this off. I'm going to be healthier. Like what, do you remember what made you decide to do that? Absolutely. So, um, we growing up, I've never been, you know, super thin, um, But after I had my kids, I definitely gained a lot more weight. I weighed more than I ever had in my life. And um, I was struggling and I was trying different diets. And we had went to the beach and there was like a little carnival set up. And my daughter wanted me to ride with her. And whenever I got on, I realized I couldn't fit for them to buckle it. And I had to jump off and let my husband ride. And when that happened, I was like, oh, no. So oddly enough, that same thing had happened to my mom when I was a child. My mom couldn't fit on a ride with me. And I remember her having to get off. And like you said, she has the greatest attitude. She was like, it's no big deal, no problem, you know, whatever. But I kind of realized it was a generational thing. And, you know, whenever there's a generational curse type thing that, that you recognize that lets you know that you can be the one to break it. And I just started coming against it and, you know, went hardcore after that. That's awesome. Wow. So that, what made you like, kind of look back and see that just remembering getting off the ride and then remembering your mom getting off the ride is what the trigger was. Wow. So you had started doing other diets. Why didn't those work for you? Do you think? And, And what did end up working for you? I think simply just them being diets, just that, and it not being um, anything that I could sustain lifestyle wise, you know, like the keto thing for me personally, that couldn't be a lifestyle because I can't not have bread. I can't, you know, I I enjoy it. And um, just trying to find a balance and realized that more or less I had a lot to learn about food because I did not know anything about food or even health, I guess, for that matter. How did you start to learn about it? Um, Research and trying different diets and realizing that no matter what it was that I was trying, nothing was sustainable for my life whether it was, you know, we're going out of town or the whole family wants to go out to dinner or whatever. It was like, I just couldn't maintain any of the extremes that I was, you know, finding with the different diets. That's so good. That's so good. I'm trying not to explode with excitement because I'm like, this is the message. This is so good. This is freedom. Um, clearly you found it, you know, but it took a a process. So you got to that point where you're like diets and extreme things. Isn't going to work for a lifestyle. Like when your family wants to go out and eat, um, you know, and vacation, which we all do, right? That's not even everyone does that. I don't think that's exclusive to anyone. Um, you know, so how did you, how did you go from like, I'm going to keep trying these different diets to here's what I'm doing and it's going to work. I started learning about what it means to eat healthy and to eat, you know, clean and how I can modify that to fit, you know, into my lifestyle. So what I started doing, you know, was small steps at first and it's just grown from there, Mm. you know, and um, for example, I mean, like, it's like been probably almost seven years ago, I quit drinking any kind of like Coke or soda or anything like that. And that was such a huge deal to me back then. And now it's something that I don't even think about. And thinking back that I used to be, you know, someone who drank Coke and things like that. If you would have told me then that I wouldn't anymore, I would have, I would have never believed you. 
And I, I guess the biggest thing is I had to change my mindset and decide who do I want to be, you know, because it's my choice and I get to make that choice every day. I don't have to be who I was when I was growing up. I don't have to be who my mom is or my family or any of that. I get to be exactly who God says he wants me to be and who he wants me to be for my children and my friends and my, you know, my family. And so once I wrapped my head around the fact that, you know, I don't want to be someone who's addicted to Coke or Diet Coke or, you know, whatever, I kind of was able to move forward with that in baby steps. You know, when I started with, okay, I, I still overeat, you know, and out of, I think, you know, emotions have a lot to do with that. It was something that I taught myself to do whenever I was young, I have a bad day, get upset, food kind of, you know, covers mm -hmm. that because I try to be, you know, positive for everyone around me. So eat something and then get over it, you know? And so I think that going through the process. So I think I went through a stage where, yeah, I was still overeating, but I was making better choices. Like, you know, I'm overeating on vegetables, you know? <laughs> and so I kind of just went from there and I just had to learn simple things. Like whenever I make my plate, there needs to be more, it has to be more vegetables on my plate than anything. And that's where I start. And then it goes from there. Then if I want to have some bread towards the end I can have a bread or rice or whatever and you know not limiting things the day that you came in you were like you have a sonic cup and a starbucks cup and I was like absolutely because you know we live in hazel green now and starbucks opened and I love it but um for example you know typically when I go to starbucks I would you know like to get just like a black coffee but there are days where I want something sweet, but whenever I do that, I get, you know, oat milk and I get the, you know, sugar-free sweetener, which isn't necessarily the best, but, you know, yeah. it's better than the sugar yeah. and um, my Sonic cup, it was full of water with um, lemons, you know, and I just make sure and make the healthiest choices possible and really take time to ask myself, is this a habit? Is this my emotions? you know, or is this really me wanting this, what's in front of me? Because I remember also whenever I was losing weight, um, being in front of people and them offering me, you know, chocolate cake or whatever it may have been and turning it down and them kind of, you know, having the attitude of, oh, that's ridiculous. You know, you can't have some chocolate cake. I can, I can, and I do. But I decide, I decide when, you know, and if I'm happy in that moment and I'm having a good time and I wasn't desiring the cake, you know, there's no need, there's no need to take it just because, you know, and there was a lot of time I think that I was eating just because. Tabitha, I'm trying not to cry because I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Because it's such good. It really is such great confirmation with, with what he's been speaking to me because it's, I'm like, we're twins in our brains. So I just love, I love that you have this story. Of course, there's so many differences, but I love what God has done for you your and your strength, really. Cause it takes, it takes somebody who's bold and saying like, no, like, Hey, hold up. Like I, I get to choose. I get to choose. You don't get to shove that in my face, like cake pusher. <laughs> yes. yes. No, thank you. <laughs> Right. And then that's the problem. I think most women have with, you know, being able to stick to, to diets is being afraid to go into those environments where you're like, so, you know, you're like in 2020, when we were all social distancing, it wasn't a big deal because it's like the weight, like, whew, I don't have to worry. I can be on a diet right now. Cause nobody's going to invite me over. And then I'm gonna have to eat all their stuff. You know, why do we do this? Why do we do this? So it's just, it is a big deal for us that we get these, um, I think we get these, I know it's like getting a rut, like a mental rut. And we're like, we have to eat the things at the party. We have to eat all the cake and pie at Thanksgiving. We have to, like, it's just something we think we have to do. But then when you start to go, wait a minute, like think about what you're thinking about, like, why am I actually doing this? And ask yourself why, like, that's when you can go, okay, like 
I can maybe bring my own dish to this party. That way I know I'll have something I, that is delicious that I actually want to eat. Um, you know, and even when you're talking about looking at your plate, I think that's magical because goodness gracious, like it's, it is, um, a different mindset when you're like, I'm filling my plate with food that I like, like I enjoy eating and that is going to love me back. Like I, you start to love food that loves you back instead of loving food. That's abusive to your body. You know, it's being like being in an abusive relationship really with food though. And you're talking about emotional eating. That's a big deal because you're right. You know, you're right. Emotions. That's the biggest trip up for so many of us women, because we are stuffers. We stuff it. Like you said, I want to be positive for everybody else. And you are, and that I can see that like my son is that way. And he's such a precious kid. And he, we did a, like an interview on his podcast and he wanted me to come on and speak about mental health. And I thought that was an honor. Cause I'm like, what 19 year old wants their mom on their podcast. But I was like, sure. <laughs> so I went in and talked to him. He admitted on air. I couldn't even believe it that he was an emotional eater. I've never heard a man ever admit that. And he said, um, afterwards I talked with him a little bit and he said, yeah, like I've just tried to be happy for everybody. And I'm like, kind of feeling like, Ooh, inside. And so I just eat. And I'm like, wow. And that comes from watching me do the same thing, just shove it all away. And so how you say you overeat, like you just still overeat on healthy things. I am the same way. That's what I decided to do. I'm like, I'm hungry. I'm eating. And I'll just eat this whole bag of frozen cauliflower by myself. Nobody else gets any (laughs) (laughs) chips or whatever. (laughs) Yes. So how did you deal with the emotional eating part that I'm sure you still battle with, you know, right now, like, how do you kind of combat that to be able to keep this weight off? Cause you've lost a hundred pounds, right. Or right at. Yeah, almost. Um, so the, the biggest thing is I think now I've realized that just like anything else that we struggle with, you know, in this world, what you know, it's a, it's a distraction from what we really need to be doing. And that's going to God, you know what I mean? How many times are we going through something and we're trying to handle it on our own? You know what I mean? Just like I said, grab something to eat really quick and make myself feel better. I really and truly have tried to get to a place where I say, you know, no matter, no matter what happens on this earth, I know that I have God, you know, no matter who I don't have, I have him and go to him and say, okay, what, what is it right now that I really need to focus on, you know, and get back to him and, and correct that. But as far as actually overeating, like whenever I watch a movie with our family, I, I definitely want a snack. So I'll get something that te- like sunflower seeds, you know, that you have to shell, you know, then eat. So that takes longer, you know, and you're probably not going to overeat sunflower seeds, you know, um, versus popcorn. I would fill it with butter and I would definitely overeat it. <laughs> um <laughs> Same. (laughs) I make sure now at the beginning of the week and I make a salad and I put it in the fridge that way, no matter what happens, if we end up having a meal that I had to make quicker, you know, than what I planned. So it ends up being not as healthy. I can go to that salad and it can, like I said, fill my plate, you know, and then it's, it's telling yourself it's okay to have other things in, you know, moderation. You know, I remember asking you that recently too, because, um, I, I just like to pick the brains. I I've really not met very many women who have been able to lose weight and keep it off. That's why I was like, you're my person right now, because, you know, to, to just pick your brain is really important to hear because I, when I started my YouTube channel, for instance, I started it with a whole different intention than what it turned into. Um, I started it with the, from the overflow of my heart when I was writing my book and I had to take some stuff out or it would have been an encyclopedia. And I thought, I'll just do YouTube. I didn't even know the first thing about YouTube or videoing or talking to myself in a room. It was the weirdest thing I'd ever experienced. If you go back and watch my first video, y'all will laugh at me. Um, but it was hard, but I just kept pushing through it. And I didn't quite know why I was doing it until April. So four months after I started it. I started documenting my weight loss journey. Like I had already been on and I lost like 30 pounds, but then COVID happened and I gained back, um, 
14 pounds in two weeks when we first went into like lockdown mode and, and everybody went out and bought all the toilet paper and little hostess cakes they could find. <laughs> and we just, you know, ate all of our TV watching, news watching, and we just sat there and ate all of our worries. That's what I did at least. And I was so mad. I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. So I went on like a diet, another diet. And I thought I'm going to record this diet. It's going to be awesome. I did not even realize what I was doing to myself until I started talking to a camera, basically talking to myself, right. And putting it on the internet, but I was talking to myself in a room like by myself. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I really have a lot of mental stuff that I need to overcome. If I'm going to ever keep this off. Cause I had this thought, I'm only going to do this for three months and I cannot wait to eat them Doritos. Like I am going to eat it all up. What? And I just had this thought like skirt rewind. What did you just say? <laughs> and I thought, no, 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 this can't be the same. So I just kept getting these comments from these women that were like, Hey, I love your, your videos about the, the diet plan I was on. I love your videos. They're so great. Thanks. They're so helpful. I've lost, uh, I lost a hundred pounds on that program three years ago, but I've gained it all back. So I'm starting again. I would hear those things constantly. And it would just like break my heart in half. Cause I'm like, you spent how much money to lose how much weight that you just gained it right back. Oh no, I'm not going down like that. So I just kind of, I, I broke my heart for them. And, and I decided at that point I'm done too. Like, so when I decided to, to do it the right way, like what you're talking about, where it's the slow and steady mind work process and mindset shifts and all that kind of stuff. It was kind of like torture at first, you know, um, until I allowed God into that and said, I really need you to guide me and to break off these strongholds I've built up about food and myself and diets and body image and all this stuff. And it's a slow go. But when I, when I like still struggle with that, um, what is it like the, I can't have that thing. Like, oh, you eat pizza and you've been able to keep that off. I remember, th I think I asked you that, like mm -hmm. you, you eat pizza still. And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, how do you do that? <laughs> Cause I feel like I'm not so sure if I could really do that. Like I can, I know, but then I'd probably be, I would be worried still that I would probably want to just eat half the pizza and I'm not even a real big pizza person at all, but if it's there, I don't know. <laughs> So another thing, so, um, making sure I actually to watch this thing. It was like a research. So our brains are wired. You know, we eat until it's gone. We eat until the bottom of the bag. We eat until the plate is empty. So it's really, really important to make sure whenever you are eating, like I said, your plate is full of something else. You mentioned Doritos, you know, if you're eating lunch and you feel your plate full of whatever is good for your body, if it's going to love you back, like you said, you know, to get out three Dorito chips and put them on the side because you can enjoy those too. You know what I mean? You don't have to eat a whole bag and you, it's important to, I think just because of our country and the, the standards for food and everything, it gets very confusing also because of just the diet culture that we live in. People get hung up on numbers and serving sizes and things like that. And our bodies are designed so perfectly. And if we mm -hmm. can kind of listen to them more, you know, and stay more intuitive with our bodies, it makes a big difference. That's very true. And that is the, the problem, um, with our, our fad, you know, our sad, sorry, uh, standard American diet that, that we have to, to weed through all this literal crap that we're eating and not even realizing it. And, and truly it, it is such a, a, it is a stronghold, um, that people can get into like addicted to junk food or addicted to sugar or addicted to, you know, that kind of stuff. And I think at one point, um, there was, there was a thing that said, um, what was it? People were giving away like, um, it was, oh, and the, uh, like, we don't realize things are bad for us to like later. So like now we know cigarettes are bad for us, right? Like nobody wants to do it. But at one point doctors were smoking while they were doing surgeries, right? They were being paid to do that so that people will go with well, the doctors doing it. It's not bad. And even during that time in the early sixties, I think it was, I read they were allowing or even prescribing cocaine to people for like health benefits, like have more energy, feel better and lose weight, 
have cocaine. Well, duh. (laughs) (laughs) And it wasn't until later. That's when everybody's like, hold on. I don't think this is a good idea. Like that's kind of what we're in right now, even with technology being kind of the same way, like, hold on. Um, maybe all this technology isn't so good for us. Maybe all this information obesity isn't so good for us. Like, so we don't really know until we're at the other side of it. And with our food, that's the problem. I think that we're in is that we're just now realizing the real effects. And of course, I just talked to my husband about this the other day about GMOs and stuff. We can't do, we can't go back and like live like nomads with like no grocery store. We just can't like we're not going to do that. So we're going to have to buy stuff that's done for us. Cause I am not going to be making bread in my kitchen, like grinding out the flour and I'm just not going to be doing all that. <laughs> so we just have to deal with what we have. So there, like you say, there's good choices, there's better choices. And then there's the best that you can get. And we just have to make these decisions to kind of be, to be informed. Cause we do live in the information obesity, um, you know, era where we can be fat on all the things we know the knowledge, but if we don't apply the knowledge, cause knowledge alone is not power applied knowledge is power, right? So like taking the information we we've learned, so go out there and figure it out and then figure out what's going to work for you. Like, what are you going to do? Like those easy swaps, or you were talking about just one thing at a time, like taking soda out or, um, you know, for me, like I don't eat regular chocolate. I buy those Lily's chocolate bars and I eat like a little square two or those. And I feel so, so I'm not feel deprived at all. And I don't feel like I'm not, I'm not on a diet. And, um, I figured out how to make lots of the same types of food that I like in a healthier way. And that helps me. I feel better because your food affects your mood. It is so true. (laughs) And to have a better mood, most people think, well, I need to go eat all the sugar. I need to go eat all the chips. I'll feel better if I eat this Ben and Jerry's, whatever it is. And then you feel like crap later on, not only because you're beating yourself up because you shouldn't have eaten it, but now your body is trying to process and your brain is trying to, you know, struggle with all the things and it's just not good. So I love that you're saying that, but if I could give you ladies any advice that's watching right now that I know would help you hundred percent, it's just that, you know what, um, choose the best options that you can as often as you can and leave the rest alone. Don't beat yourself up about every little thing. Like Tabitha just said, three Doritos. Hey, if you want to eat a couple Doritos and you don't feel like you can eat them without eating the whole bag, maybe don't eat them for a little while and then come back to them later, or don't obsess over the numbers. Like you just said, I've, I was started out at 260 pounds. This is a huge deal. Ladies hear me right now. This is what I teach in my drop the weight group coaching and my course program. This is so vitally important to your growth to get over this whole diet mindset and diet roller coasters and all the yo-yo crap. It's to get off of the fixation of the numbers and what you think healthy looks like versus what healthy actually looks like for your body. So Tabitha, you just said you lost uh, right at hundred pounds. You started out at 260. So that means you're right around 160. How many women could say, 160 is their goal. Probably not very many. If you're 160, you probably think you're fat and something's wrong with you. And so unless you're like 260 and you're like, Hey, I'd like to just be 240 right now. But, but if you're, if you're really like obsessing over the numbers, that's, that's a big problem. So taking a step back and even looking at my own body, I thought if I didn't weigh 125 pounds, I had nothing to give. I couldn't tell anybody anything. I'm like, that's not true because I'm healthy. I'm healthy for my body. I don't have to look like the the lady on the magazine at the checkout stand. I can look like myself. And you all seen the picture I posted here in the group of Tabitha before and after. I don't think she even looks 160 pounds. Like I can't even believe it Um, because she's, to me, she's like the most cute Barbie doll body, rocking body I've ever seen. Like, I'm like, she's, she's like amazing. I just think she's so beautiful in every way inside and out. And it's funny how we do that to ourselves. We look at these numbers and we think I can only eat 900 calories a day and you're starving and you can't lose weight because your body's like, hold on, don't let it go. You know? So I, I love what you've shared, Tabitha. It has been um, incredible. And I have a question I'd like to, um, ask you from one of my viewers on Facebook. Is that okay? Yes. 
Okay. So she says, Faith, we're going to answer your question right now. Okay. Faith says, how do you feel satisfied with the healthy food? Okay. So when I'm emotional or stressed or depressed, I always choose unhealthy food. Then I feel so guilty and stupid that I chose it, um, that I chose, even I know that it wasn't a good choice. Okay. So like, how do you feel satisfied with healthy food when you're emotional, depressed, um, you know, when you're, when you're feeling like you need to emotionally eat and choose unhealthy food. So that I think goes back to what you were just saying about there's, you know, there's good, there's better, and there's the best. And when I tell you that even now, you know, through this journey, I'm still learning, you know, more and more all the time, because I truly am. I mean, I am obsessed with health now. I really am, but it's there. It doesn't seem like it whenever you just walk into Walmart, you know, and look, but there are so many things that um, are still what I guess we call in the South, you know, real comfort foods that are not, you know, noodles, you know, not um, bread, not whatever. And I think that that comes with educating yourself, you know, and maybe even doing this video with you has kind of shown me that it might be a good idea for me to be more vocal, you know, about my journey and, you know, kind of help with grocery lists and, you know, give some help because there are breads that you can buy. You can make a sandwich and you can have bread that is not garbage that is going to fuel your body and you're still going to feel good and you don't have to feel bad about eating it, you know, and, and there are chips that you can get and eat. There are chips that you can make, you know, and that is the only thing that has been able to get me to where I can keep up my lifestyle and maintain. I have to, I had to educate myself on the good the better and the best. And it was a process. It's a process. I tell myself and anyone who asks me, I tell them just a guideline. If you're just getting started is if you can put it on the shelf and it is, and it's going to last you more than say a week, get it out, get it out of your, don't put it in your body. How is your body supposed to break it down? You know, if you, if it has a shelf life that long, what's in it giving it that shelf life? Like I've noticed whenever I started this bread, the bread that I was bringing into our house originally, you know, I'm looking at it and it's lasting for weeks, which is crazy because whenever I was young, bread wouldn't last that long, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's awful what they're putting into our food. You don't want to put that into your body. Same with the, you know, the same with the chips and things like that. The more you educate yourself, I think the more you get to a point where, yeah, you went from putting a few Doritos on your plate to wrapping your head around. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm too magnificent to do that. Just like I'm too magnificent to smoke. You know, I'm not going to walk around drunk. You know, we're not going to do those things. That's, you know, Christian 101. So, you know, we, we're not going to fill our bodies the more you get educated with poison because that's essentially what it, what, what it is. And timelines will tell you that, you know, our great, great, great grandparents were living longer and, you know, just shorter and shorter our lives are getting. And I know that God has not called us to, to have shorter lives. He, he didn't intend that for us. And he wants you to be able to enjoy your life, you know, and focusing on what can I put in my body to fuel it in a good way to keep my brain healthy, you know, which is in turn going to keep my whole body healthy, my heart, everything, asking yourself that instead of getting focused on, I want to weigh this amount, you know, because I think whenever I first started losing weight, I was like, man, it would be so great if I could weigh like 120 pounds or 130 pounds. I would look awful <laughs> if I weighed that much. I have a lot of muscle. I do. And it, it would be terrible. But in my head for a yeah. long time, that's what I thought. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got, I still have weight to lose, you know, mm -hmm. 
getting to a point where I realized, you know, even whenever I had lost maybe, you know, five more pounds, I actually remember I had seen a picture of myself and I was like, oh no, I, I don't look healthy. And I realized I didn't feel healthy, you know, and whenever you're getting to that point where you're feeling, you know, defeated or you're feeling, you know, that you're not getting enough nutrients, that's your body telling you, yeah, yeah, you're not, you know, something that you're doing isn't right because your body is going to help you through this process. And truly, I think the bottom line comes from being uneducated with nutrition. The generation that I grew up in was my mom, seeing my mom and my parents diet, 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 you know, and it didn't matter what they were putting into their body, you know, health bars or whatever it may have been. And, you know, come to find out, just like you said about smoking, it's half that was garbage, you know, it's hard to find a true healthy health bar, you know. That's so true. I love that, Tabitha. So basically you're describing an identity shift. Yes. You're describing going from someone who identifies as an emotional eater, who's overweight and unhealthy and always on a diet to identifying now as somebody who is choosing to live longer, healthier life. You, cho- you're choosing, like, I remember you telling me, I didn't ever care to exercise. Now I'm like, yes, I'm going to do this because I, you feel better. And, and you when you feel better, um, you do better when you feel good, you do good for yourself. If you feel like crap and you're beating yourself up all the time, that's not motivating you to change and be, be different. So ultimately you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind and your identity is shifting from this is I'm someone who drinks Coke to now I'm someone who doesn't drink Coke because that's just not who I am. It's not, I can't have it. It's I don't, I don't, I just don't. And there's no need to feel guilty. If somebody pushed a cigarette in your face right now, would you be like, I better take that. So they don't feel bad. No, (laughs) you'd be like, I don't smoke. Thanks. So have a nice day. You know, you're not going to be mean to them or judge them. You're just going to say, no, it's the same concept y'all. That's what I'm hearing from Tabitha. And that is why I wanted her to share this because she, she maintained this weight loss and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but she maintained this weight loss because she took on her identity in Christ and started to honor her body and realized her body's the temple that houses the Holy spirit. Hmm. Like if, if somebody's coming to your house, like if I was going to your house, Tabitha today, and you're like, Oh, Catherine's coming over. I better like shove all this stuff in the closet and, you know, Febreze the toilet seats. Like, I don't know. We do stupid stuff when people are coming over, don't we? (laughs) So why don't we do that when the Holy spirit is literally coming over? He dwells. That means lives in us. He's in our, he dwells within us. Why would we continue to open our mouth and pour in garbage because we don't feel good or we don't we're having a hard time, which leads me to another question, um, that I had here. Okay. The hardest, this is from Linda. The hardest part for me is eating even when I'm not hungry. And I don't know why I do that. I'm just too depressed and eating makes me feel better. But then after I eat, I feel horrible and I don't know how to make it stop. Do you have any suggestions or tips for Linda? Absolutely. So same, you know, Uh, and understanding that, like she said, you decide, you're deciding to, whenever you're eating healthy, you're deciding to glorify God. We are made in his image. And if you want God to shift and change, that kind of was where I was at too. You know, God, use me you know, use me. And it's, you know, some point I came to the realization, I'm like, well, he can't even trust me to get my eating under control, you know? And did I have such little faith in him that I thought he couldn't help me do it, you know, because he can kind of realizing that when you, when you're fueling your, your mind and your body with these awful foods and not only eating the wrong things, but overeating the wrong things, 
you know, you're gonna continue in that circle. You're gonna stay depressed. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna be angry at yourself for still being depressed and overeating. It's gonna keep on happening. And there's no other way to say it, except that is a, that is a trap and it is a lie from Satan. And I feel very strongly that in this day and age where we are right now, that the Holy Spirit is calling on women to stand up. Yes. And I think that it has become an absolute joke mm -hmm. to, to Satan that we sit and we, you know, we overeat and we do this because we don't know any better. You know, we're, we're, we haven't, we haven't learned enough. And so we're in this mental health trap. We're in this trap of, I'm seeing all these people that look different than me on Facebook and social media mm -hmm. and all of these things, you know, but then we're still picking up our Bible and going to church on Sunday. And it says you're made in my image and you're beautiful and you know, you're perfect and wonderfully made. We are, but just like the joke where the guy, you know, says, uh, God, I pray for you to help me. And he's like, yeah, well, I sent you three boats. You know, that little joke, everybody knows. I have a feeling that he's saying the same thing. Yeah, I have food that grows right from the earth that I made just like I made you, you know, and we're down here running amok and ruining everything he created because this is you know satan's playground and if you can wrap your mind around the fact that god has a beautiful plan for your life and that he has something big for you to do and that satan is if he can't trip you up in a big way you know because i see that you're a christian you're on her page you're listening to what she has to say if if he can't trip you up in a big clear way ha ha she's you know whatever, then he's going to do it in a small way where you can't even see it. Yeah. And don't, don't allow it. Don't allow it. And if that takes baby steps, that's fine. That's what I had to do. I, I, I'm, I don't always eat perfect. I'm not perfect. I just went, she told you guys, my mom got married. I overate, you know, definitely ate things that I normally wouldn't had I've been at home. But I didn't give up just like, you know, I am a Christian and although I may still sin, I get angry and I act in ways that I know God wouldn't want me to act. It's the same with eating. I do wrong and I mess up, but every day is a new day. You know, I, I go to him, I get with him, I'm back home now and I start over fresh and I have no doubt that God has something important for me to do in my life and in my children's life. And I know that he called me to break a curse that was, that was generational on my family. And I absolutely, totally view food in a different way that I was taught now. And, and I know that it's for a reason. I know that it's for a reason and mm -hmm. that cycle is going to be breaking. That is going to be between you and God. And just like you educate yourself in the Bible, in his word, educating yourself on what is good to go in your body, you know, the fruits of the spirit, growing those self-control that I think is one of my favorite ones, having self-control. That doesn't just mean over, you know, your attitude towards other people, you know, not lashing out. That also means overeating and what you choose to eat. And no, it might always, you know, might not seem fun to eat a salad. And it certainly doesn't always seem fun to exercise, but I remind myself every time who I am now, who I've been called to be, and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do because my children's life depends on it. You know, I'm God's child. His children's life depends on it. What we do, each and every one of us, it has an effect, you know, so I'm just claiming for you and anyone else watching that Satan's grip loosens and it is gone in the name of Jesus. It absolutely makes me sick, but because I've been through 
this already and I know I'm telling you right now that it is laughable and he is defeated and you do not have to go through this anymore. You do not. Girl, I'm about to start praising up in here. Yes. <laughs> The enemy is defeated. He is under our feet. I love how you said that. That's beautiful. Absolutely Absolutely beautiful. I am so filled. (laughs) I'm so filled with encouragement. Thank you. Wonderful. What about you ladies? Are you so encouraged by all that she's saying? I, I can just see this. I know, I know that you are not a, a, a health coach and you don't do all the things that, you know, like what I do, but man, you could be, you could be totally <laughs> used because that you are inspirational and you're helpful and you're clear and concise. And, um, like you said, man, I just need to be more vocal about this. I agree. And mm-hmm. if you ever feel called to do it, I'll support you in every single way. Um, because you're right. People do need help with that. You know, with the, the food swaps, even like you can eat Ezekiel bread, you can eat, you know, <laughs> you know, that kind of <laughs> stuff you can. So, yeah, I think that that's phenomenal to, to, to think about educating people in the future. I think it doesn't really matter what I think, but I think that it's phenomenal and you do great. Um, you do really great. And then Linda also said that she, um, she is battling this, uh, this emotional eating stuff, but that God did help her quit smoking, um, almost four years ago. Now she just quit cold Turkey and she's like 60, you know, so, and she'd smoked her whole life. And so I know that it's changes available for everyone. And I really want to say this too, before we really jump into some more questions. I know there's a couple more, um, that have come on, um, but that, um, you know, none of us live forever. So there is a little lie that is, like you said, it's those things that we don't even see, but it's huge. Okay. It's a little lie though, that we think, um, nobody lives forever. Why do I have to worry about my diet? I'm going to die one day. Anyway, might as well enjoy my life and eat it all now. Hmm. That is like poop. (laughs) It's not good. It's not good because yes, we're all going to die one day. We know that this is not, this is a fallen world. We live in this is not the perfect world. This isn't the heaven. This isn't all the things, right? But we can choose to honor our bodies and we can choose to allow God, uh, the Holy spirit and to rule and reign in our life. And to say, I submit myself to you and what you have for my life and live a more fulfilling, more like a happier, because you'll have a better mood, more energy, excuse me. You won't be sitting around on the couch. Um, just kind of wanting to just do nothing because you know, uh, it's like the, the law that says a body or uh, like an object in motion stays in motion an object at rest stays in rest. If you are constantly sitting, you're going to stay sitting. If you'll just get up and move a little bit, the next day you might be able to move a little bit more. There's not, no, don't go to the gym and start like lifting weights and try to be the next extreme bodybuilder, you know, person, but Um, you know, just give it, give it a go and try and like, give, give yourself some easier things to do. That's healthier. Like you said, the salad thing, it may not sound so fun, but add some pumpkin seeds to it, uh, water down a little ranch, throw it in there, put some chicken on it, some eggs, some olives, whatever it is you like, make it awesome and eat that. Even if it's a 500 calorie salad, it's better than a 500 calorie hamburger and fries, which isn't 500 calories, but you know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that'd be like a happy meal. Um, but just giving yourself that, like, okay, forget that. Yes. That, uh, nobody lives for everything. Forget it because you're right. But while you are alive, why don't you want to just live your life to the fullest? And that doesn't mean eating all the things, you know, smoking all the things, drinking all the things that's not really living life to the fullest. That's living numbed out and no fun. And I know uh, a la- another lady just uh, commented in here, Angela she said she was delivered from alcohol three years ago. Praise God for that. And she's now um, post-menopause. She's sober, you know, and food is a huge issue for her. She's struggling with, and the, for the first time in over 20 years, she said, and I can see why that's probably an issue because most of the time we just swap out one addiction for another. I did used to smoke cigarettes. And so, um, years and years ago. So when I quit, I just swapped it out for, I was already like overweight and had food issues, but I just basically went from that addiction to a food addiction. Um, so it's, it's just breaking the spirit of addiction off your life period in every area. And that, that is, um, would be a help Angela. Um, if you just start speaking, that over yourself and just claiming that the spirit of addiction is broken in every area of your life, every area. 
and that um, that is just done in Jesus name. And then there's another question here in the chat in the Zoom room. And uh, let's see here. I saw it from Jolene come in a minute ago. Okay. She said, what are some of the prayers you've prayed to break off the strongholds? Do you have any like things you've said to yourself or prayers that you've might've prayed that might help her? I just truly say whatever is on my heart. Um, and I am quick <laughs> to come against any spirit that I know is not the Holy Spirit, you know, and I think that focusing, like she was saying, she had quit, the other lady had, um, you know, quit drinking alcohol, now she's more um, eating, I was the opposite, I got my health under control, and um, it's been I, like over a year now, I quit drinking totally, just 100%, and um, that was another one of those generational curse things. I'm like, why are we still drinking? No. So um, I quit that. And I, I think my husband quit also. And I think that he struggled with it even more than me. My husband stays really busy working. And um, so I'm home more than him. But I notice the more that I release the Holy Spirit, you know, into our home. And the more I, you know, the more I do these things and focus, focus on God, whether that be, you know, okay, I'm feeling like sitting down and eating right now, or, you know, it, turning on the TV, instead, turn on some praise and worship music, you know what I mean? And lift your hands and just become present with the Lord because it is going to, it is not, this journey is not easy. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it was easy and no problem. You know, I'm not going to, but if you can keep your focus on God, and like I said, remember who he wants you to be and what he wants for you, what he intended, then when you're doing that and you go to him, whether it be in praise, you know, that's a good way to get some exercise, whether it be in praise or what, whatever it may be, changing your environment, you know, you were inside going outside, you know, maybe not even for a walk, you know, but going outside, is so important, just changing your environment and, and getting with God. And I think when you get fully present with God, I don't think that there's any one specific prayer that I could give you guys. My prayer is always for me to remember who he has called me to be, to remember that I am the daughter of a king and to remember that I was as beautiful then whenever I weighed 260, yeah, as I am now, because I am wonderfully made by him. And, and that at every, every size, now it might be easier to get other people's attention because they're like, wow, Tabitha's lost weight. And I hope that God can use that. But as far as how I physically look, I'm the same from my heart, you know, I'm the same Tabitha and the changes that have been made are more spiritual changes and soul changes that he's made in me. And so my biggest prayer would just be for you guys to understand that that's what he wants. God just wants your heart. And when you can fully focus on giving him your heart in every aspect and pray that, you know, you're going to see, you're going to see changes. You're going to see an attitude change. You're going to see a heart change, a brain change, and you're going to start finding your power because I, I truly tell people all the time. I know I said it earlier, God has a, a calling for women right now. We are being called. We have a specific job. There is something that is going to be carried out by women. And it is so powerful right now yeah. being a woman. And remember that through, through Christ, you have the power to get rid of any demons or anything that comes against you that was not sent by him. Person, 
at me, whatever, get rid of it. If it's a spirit telling you that you're sad, you want to overeat, whatever it may be, use your power through Christ and get rid of it. Get rid of it. It's not welcome on you. It's not welcome on your home. And I think that doing that is what my husband had to have. I had to have his back because he struggled. He was like, we can't drink at all. And I'm like, no, we can't drink at all. And I, I think he was like, what in the world? But getting the Holy Spirit moving in our house, mm -hmm. he, I think yeah. he was able to feel it. He was able to feel it. And I prayed over him and I prayed for him. And I'll be doing the same thing for all of you that are, you know, that are watching, you know, with all of your questions. And, and I, I, I love to help. I'm not, um, somebody who, you know, is quick to, you know, start a podcast or a YouTube or anything like that, but I absolutely love people. I have a heart for people and I am more than happy to help you with any questions you have. You will never, you will never bother me. I'll never roll my eyes at you. Why are they bothering me type thing? I would love to help anyone who has any questions. That's Thank you, problem. Tabitha. Oh my goodness. I just love you. I just want to hug you through this thing right now. <laughs> just hope y'all can feel this amazing, genuine love from her because it is, it's real. She, this is who she is. Y'all are getting to see it. It's real. It's hundred percent. This is who she is. And I'm so thankful for women like you, Tabitha, that are speaking the truth, that are taking a stand in your family that are, you know, encouraging other women in their, in their journeys to, to get free from any bondage, strongholds, any of that crap in their life. And, uh, we're in a really special time in this, in this, in, in history, in this world, you know, in, in, on the earth. And, uh, we, we have, uh, the power to, you know, do a lot of things right now. If we will just, uh, for the kingdom, if we'll just get our eyes off of ourself and onto, uh, like others, like not in a comparative way. I mean, like in a way that we're like, how can I encourage someone today instead of look at me, woe me is all my problems, all my issues. Like if you will take your eyes off yourself and start serving others, you'll realize really quickly that your problems aren't as big as you thought they were. Right. And that other people really matter. And, uh, and you can make a big difference. Just like Tabitha, you said, you don't have a YouTube. You don't have to, who cares? You don't need all that stuff. I don't, I don't even have the time. I'm like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Why did I do this? Cause it's a lot of work. So, Hey, that's okay. But you know, just say, just loving that you're allowing women to reach out to you. So you guys can probably look her up. I'm sure just, um, I put her name in the description and everything. You guys will be able to go in and look her up on Facebook and be able to communicate with her that way. Just send her a friend request. I'm sure. Uh, is that okay, Tabitha? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. okay. Well, y'all, this has been, first of all, a lot longer than I expected, but super glad it was. I'm so thankful for it. I could probably talk to you another hour. <laughs> Although I know your voice needs a rest, but I've, I've just sensed the, um, grace on your voice. Cause it's gotten even better throughout. So I'm very thankful for that, uh, transparency and you just being able to, to share. So it's so I know it's been transformational. It's been encouraging to me. I feel full. I hope you ladies have too. If, um, I don't see any more questions coming in, but lots of people on the group Tabitha, cause I know you can't see that or just saying, amen. Thank you. Good work. All that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and, and just encouraging one another in the chat. So I'm super uh, glad that everybody's kind of interacting there. Um, but you can't see that. So I wanted you to know everybody says, thank you. And, uh, um, I'm, I'm super thankful. So Joyce, the group is the drop the weight group. The one that I was just talking about, you're in the drop the weight group and I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. You're in there. Yeah. You're definitely in there. Cause you've been in there encouraging women too. Cause Joyce, um, you guys maybe can't see her on your screen. I think you can only see Tabitha and I, but Joyce has also been on a, a transformation journey and, and a weight loss journey as well. But again, the same thing applies if you don't change the, the way you view yourself and all the things like, doesn't you are still beautiful at the, you know, heavier or the thinner or whatever, but it, I lost a hundred pounds in my lifetime and got down to 120, I think it was 128 pounds. And I hated myself. I didn't love myself any more than I, I did when I was a 228 pounds. 
Uh, you have to learn to love yourself and not in a, like, I'm so full of myself way, but in a way that God loves you in a way that he, um, like Tabitha said, you're fearfully, wonderfully made, you know, see yourself the way he sees you. And that's hard to do. I just got this download from the Lord as I was walking this week. And I, I, I guess now is the time I'm supposed to share it. I really know when, in, when, or if I was ever going to share this, but here it goes. He said to me, why don't my daughters understand who they are in Christ? Cause that's such a huge part of my message. And I'm like, well, I don't know why. Cause I still struggle with it. And I know who I am. I know who I am, but there's times I still struggle. You know, my heart, God. And he said, it's because your eyes are focused on you and not on me, your ability and not on mine, your inadequacy, not on my adequacy, not on what I am doing, but what you're doing, your ability. So I was like, whoa, I never seen it that way. So ladies, if you're focusing on your self, trying to identify as a daughter, trying to find your identity in Christ through reading Ephesians and reading what Jesus did for you um, and how he has totally transformed your life already. You just have to receive it. It's like, he's been handing you a gift, like the boat <laughs> and you just haven't taken it, you know, uh, yet, but once you take it, you will, you'll, you'll get it. But he's saying that if you don't know who you are in Christ, because you, even if you know, like you've heard it, but you still don't like believe it. The belief only comes from knowing who he is and his ability. So if you focus on him, on God, the creator, the father the of all things, the, the uh, most amazing, almighty, the one love, focus on love. His name is love. Focus on him. And uh, he will show you how to accept that and walk in your true identity because you are a daughter of the king. And it's unfortunate that at one point, in your life, you were stolen out of the castle, just like Sleeping Beauty, stolen right out from underneath your your king's kingly father's, um, you know, hand. Even though it's totally different, but it's kind of a good picture. And you were raised in the middle of nowhere, so to speak, and you you didn't know you didn't know who you were. You you just grew up thinking you're just a common person, you're just a commoner, you're just a peasant. You're not. You're not, you're powerful. And there's so many amazing things that you're called to do and the authority that you've been given, but you do, you just need to learn. You need to learn. And so how else can you learn? Um, but through the father. So, um, so focusing on him, I guess that's what I was supposed to say. That's what he showed me this week. And, and I hope that that has resonated with you and I am excited um, Tabitha, again, thank you for being here. I'm so excited to share with y'all this uh, four day mindset reset challenge that we're going to be walking through here in a, a couple of weeks. Um, actually, it's coming up a lot faster than I'm ready. It's like a freight train in my life right now. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> we're going to be going through this kind of stuff, y'all. We're going to be talking through a lot of this stuff. I'm going to be sharing some resources with you and um, inviting you to be part of the group coaching that that I have um, also in, in the course that I've created. And I thought writing a book was hard, y'all. Mm -mm. Nope. Writing a book was a three-year process. It's right back there somewhere. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I never thought in my life that creating this course would be as intensive as it has been, but the Lord's downloaded so much to me in this one year since my, really since the passing of my father, my dad, my earthly dad, um, that I just knew it was time. So, um, yeah, there's freedom, food, freedom, diet, freedom, you know, you're free to be loved and cherished in, in Christ. So I guess we'll go ahead and end it there. And ladies, thank you for being here. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for showing up for Tabitha, uh, and Tabitha, thank you for taking time out of your homeschooling day and mom and day. I <laughs> so appreciate it. Of course. I was happy to do it. Thank you for asking me. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. All right, ladies. Uh, that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and end the call here. And if you have any other questions, you can keep those coming in later. If you're watching on the replay, just type in replay and then your question. And I can just do my best to answer that for you um, at that point. Okay. But otherwise y'all have a good rest of your day. Thanks for being here. Bye. All right. I'm going to stop recording. And then we'll go ahead and end that.